Hi everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave. And uh, yes, mini proton packs. Oh, here is, here's one of my babies. I have several. This one's the HasLab proton pack that I accuratized and made uh, more weathered, added some new stickers, but that's not what this is about. Well, there's a couple of things. One is that I got this, oh yeah, apparently I did do some weathering on that proton pack because Good Lord, give me a sec. The reason we're talking about proton packs is because Blitzway sent me this amazing 1 6th Ecto-1 that's gorgeous. And it came with this beautiful gurney with fold out wheels and this gurney holds four proton packs. But your options for proton packs are limited because they come either as hot toys or there's some other version that are less expensive than the hot toys, but still it's like an expensive proposition to get out, uh, to get a miniature proton pack. And I just got a new toy. This is my new Carbon X1 Bamboo X1 Carbon 3D printer. I've been using 3D printers since the first MakerBot. I built it in my office at my house a couple blocks away like 12 years ago. And I remember giving it to Norm and uh, Will. And I have been clear here that I have not quite, I've not really added 3D printing into my process here in the cave. Um, and there's multiple factors for that, multiple factors. And I'm still unpacking some of them. But the fact is, is that a few weeks ago, I needed a 3D print to size something. And Norm did the print for me on a bamboo carbon and brought it into me and I touched it. And I just knew, I just knew by touching the print from this, this the FDM that I was holding on to something remarkable. I was like, what made this? I literally was like, dude, what what made this? He was like, yeah, it's the bamboo carbon and it's changing things. So full disclosure, bamboo sent this to me with the AMS, the, the filament system up top. It's a great deal. It's a great deal for what it is and its speed is crazy. And it takes films of what you're printing. Here's some video of one of my proton packs printing up. I've already made, I've already made one. Look at this, this is so cute. I just love this, this is so freaking cute. I can't get over it. Yeah, so I'm gonna make a full set of proton packs that sit in this. Now this is made for a certain type of pack, so I'm gonna have to pop these little stands out. And uh, you know, maybe what I'll do is I'll 3D print a new holder that holds the proton packs from the bottom. I've also hogged out some space in this for lighting because I want this to be lit. I'm not gonna have it animated lit, but I am gonna have it lit. Yeah, um, sure, I could add the animation later if I needed to, but for right now, let's just go with the animation, with the, with the lighting in and of itself. Um, but that's what today's build is. I'm printing up some miniature proton packs. I'm gonna paint them up, I'm gonna primer them up, and I'm gonna detail them and make them look all pretty. I gotta print up some Neutrona wands. This is fabulous. What, there's already two of them? There are. Um, we're gonna print up a bunch right now. Uh, because also, the, 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 this is on bog standard out of the box settings. And this is like just over an hour to print this. And it's several parts. Uh, you'll, you'll see the whole process. Uh, I'm printing one up right now. This one's only 25 minutes from being done. Yeah, you want to see this. Hold on. So it gets its uh, uh, filament from up here and it comes down here and watch this puppy go. Oh. No supports like that. There's no support on that. It's perfect. Incredible. Sometimes you don't know when a threshold gets crossed for bringing a new process into your normal procedure until the threshold gets crossed. It wasn't until I touched this print from this printer that I was like, oh, that can be really useful to me. Now I understand where a 3D printer could fit into my process. There is no way that I could achieve anything close to this in anything close to this amount of time. And it's just beautiful. I know you're saying like, but that was true of printers all along and I get it, you're right. And yet this one somehow like broke through a part of my brain that allowed me to see a little, a little bit bigger. I am also going to make the backpacks using some brass rod and some soldering. So we've got a whole, we're gonna make these really accurate and really fun. 
I don't know about the stickers just yet. I have some sticker paper. Stickers are gonna be really small. We will see. All right, print is done. This is crazy. It's crazy how easy this is. Uh, this file I picked up on printables from a builder named The New Hobbyist. There are many, many proton packs out there in the 3D printable world. They all have different things to recommend them. And, you know, I'm sure some of them have accuracy issues, but when you're doing miniature stuff, you can really get away with a lot more variance in that regard. But um, this is great. This is like, and this is again, doing this just on the basic settings. So we're gonna pop this off. So, uh, let's see. I'm going to do a... I, there's a couple things to do for this. One is... This is great. The uh, This little tube here, and they print it with its little part there. It's all so awesome. So I'm going to do this, put this all together using a thin CA glue. Because I am going to add all the little tubing to this thing, I'm going to drill out the ends of these guys because it doesn't really matter which one I drill out. which is mostly, most of the way there. This thing doesn't have much in the way of flash, flashing. Uh, yeah, and then there's the, yeah, this guy. I can't remember all the specific names for each of these parts, I'm sorry. So, there we go. This kind of job is what the thin ZA glue was totally built for. It's just perfect for this kind of thing. Uh, I'm gonna put this in here. Now, before I glue on the bumper, I'm actually going to drill these out because I want to make them accommodate a little bit of lighting. So I'm going to go over to the mill and we're going to drill this out. We're going to, well, actually, first up, I want to, um, I want to hog the bottom of this. Yeah, I want to hog this out with a Forstner bit. And here's how we're going to do that. We are going to uh, use this at uh, 0.75. So what I just did there was I drilled a 16th inch hole through the center of this that came out the back. Now when I chuck this into my mill, 
I'll be able to bring the Forstner bit up, center it on that, and know that I'm coming up all the way into this, up to there, like, whoosh, like hogging out all of that material. I know, I know, I know. I could probably modify the drawing and make the space that I want, but um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it this way. <laughs> all right, uh, so let's get this into the mill. That sets my bottom. Centered. This one. And I'm going super gently. Oh, yeah. Oh, glorious. Amazing. Good enough. I like it. Yeah, that's great. That's just what I wanted. Yeah, I'll hide that crime. Um, I am also going to come up under the, sorry, I'm also going to come up under the light bar here and mill out some of this material. Take off the top layer first, and then I'll go down and plunge through all the material. There we go. Excellent. I didn't go through too much of it. Come on, we'll get one more hole out of this. Okay, now we get a little file. This is so fast, it's just so simple. I think I have ribbon cable. Look at that! I do. Uh, so I want to uh, I want to make a port for that here. So I'm going to do a little carve in there on these. Oh, and I'm going to uh, yeah, I'm going to pop the oh right. That's going to be how I do this one. Did I get this one wrong? I did. I glued this one backwards. Duh. Oh, that's for the train spotters. Here we go. Okay. Uh, there's that guy. Pretty pleased with that.
Oh, this is awesome. This is with a little spray paint. So to do this, I simply painted this with some Tamiya Black, which I let dry. And then I did a little Rust-Oleum texture. And those two gave, they got rid of all the build lines here. I mean, you it just looks like pack texture, man. Crazy how good that looks. It's a little pack. <laughs>
Yo, come in. I just, I love the texture. The texture came out perfect. Dude, I am so happy about this. Look at that. Look at that beautiful little thing. This is just my test. Oh, that's so great. Well, it's a beautiful morning. I sent two more proton packs in carbon fiber and this is like, this is next level. I mean, you can see a texture, but it is, it is beautiful. I'm sending another print right now for something different. But uh, I'm really like these carbon fiber uh, PLA uh, are amazing. Totally, totally amazing. What is with my hair this morning? I'm getting a haircut tomorrow. Tomorrow, I promise. At any rate, uh, it's going great. I now have, I have one, two, three, four here, proton packs. Uh, I've got to assemble the two carbon fiber ones and give them a little paint and prep them for lighting. I've got four, four backpack frames here that I'm about to build. Uh, I'll solder those all up at once. Yeah, I have one spaghetti issue with the carbon fiber, which was this guy, this, this one tall piece messed up on one half. Uh, and it had some funny failure modes, but ultimately it only wrecked that one part of the print of both of these, which is good as a five hour print. I feel like I'm talking about 3D printing like I've only just discovered it. And I'm sorry that like, if. <laughs> because it's, to a certain extent, that's true. Uh, anyway, uh, this little guy, I took this home last night. This is only partially complete, but I'm so happy with it. I like can't even stand it. it like makes me, uh, so I'll end up with five, but this one's my desk fidget. So yeah, uh, some gluing. Oh, right, I can make one of these. I am very happy with this. That is a lovely little Alice pack and not that hard to make. And just to be clear, the order of operations is you put down the cross, the, the upright member and the two side members and the U, and you do these two joints first and then you do these four. Then you put this on its side, you do the triangle here and the triangle there with two little bits of solder. Then you put in this piece which you solder here first and then here and here from the back. Then you do these three pieces. That's the order of operations for this. Now I'm about to put this down on top of the uh, motherboard. Time to paint these. One, two. Actually, let's paint their undersides first, just to, just to be.
I could not be happier with how this all turned out. I think these look great, and this one is going to be like the ultimate little death toy for me. I am so happy. I think I got all the cabling right. Amazing. Uh, Sharp-eyed viewers have noticed perhaps that these aren't lit. The electronics for this is a separate build. It's got to be a separate build. I, uh, it's, uh, I'm leaving town. I'm going to be back in a week or so. So we'll just... We'll let this one, we'll let this one wrap here. Now that I got a gurney, I got a gurney full of, full of proton packs. I'm really happy about it. They look great. Dude, dude. Uh, and here's my little, that's my boutonniere for wearing to the premiere. That's what I'm going to do. Um, thank you guys for joining me for this one day build that took two days. Uh, and yeah, I love my new printer. It's printing up. It's pre printing up some of those uh, some of those heads from Spirited Away. Um, yeah, see you guys next time. Thanks, thanks for thanks for coming on along.